Writing a strong paper means understanding your audience, but that can be trickier than it sounds. This video will explain what audience really means and how and why to use that knowledge to improve the explanation in your paper. Who is the audience for your paper? If you're writing a paper for a school assignment, you're probably thinking, that's pretty obvious. Your teacher is clearly your audience. They assigned the paper, you turn it into them, they're going to give you feedback and possibly even a grade it and um, give you points for it. So obviously you're writing it for them, right? If you're a homeschooler, it can seem even more personal because it's often your parents or guardians who have given you the assignment and will be reading it. You know them well. How hard can it be to write for them with them in mind? But the audience of a paper is usually not the person who assigned it. Instead, writers are supposed to craft an imagined audience in their minds while they write. That audience might be a peer, someone your own age and with the general understanding of someone in middle or high school. It could be someone much younger than you who has basically no understanding of the topic and needs it explained in a very basic way. The audience could be someone with advanced expertise in the topic who will already know a lot about it. No matter who your imagined audience is, they are going to have an impact on your paper and it's not just their level of expertise that you have to imagine. It's different to write for an audience who is likely to enthusiastically agree with you than it is to write for one that's likely to disagree or not care. Let's take a closer look at how audience impacts your writing choices. Audience has an impact on just about every aspect of a paper. Here are some of the main ones. Style, content, and depth of explanation. When it comes to style, for example, you'll change up the way you write depending on your audience. You'll see this in vocabulary choices. If you're writing for experts, you'll tend to use much more complicated vocabulary. If you're writing for little kids, you'll pick simpler, easier to understand words. This also applies to sentence complexity. If you're writing for your peers, you might use shorter, simpler sentences, whereas if you're writing for an expert, you might use longer, more complicated sentences. And it handles tone and formality. So maybe if you're writing a book for little kids, you add some humor to it and there's maybe some jokes and it's much less formal. Whereas if you are writing for a group of experts, maybe you're writing a report, then that is going to be much more formal and you're probably not going to have as much of the humor or the, the kind of more personal, informal tone to it. And so audience is impacting the choices you're making with your style and how you end up writing your paper. Likewise, audience has a huge impact on the actual content you include. So as far as your examples, if you are writing for kind of an expert, you are probably going to pull examples from more scholarly sources. Whereas if you're writing for an audience that's younger than you and less informed, you're probably going to pour pull from more general sources. Um, your examples are going to be more relatable depending on who your audience is. And even the length of your entire paper shifts because of the audience. That brings us to depth of explanation, which is really the point of this video. Depending on who your imagined audience is, you'll want to make sure that you've given appropriate definitions of potentially unfamiliar terms. Let's say, for example, you're writing about weather and you use the word erosion. A peer might be expected to know that word, but a younger kid might need it defined. You'll also want to look at the provided context, that is background information. If you're writing about a book and you can assume your audience has already read it, you won't have to give as much summary. But if you're writing for someone who has never read it, you'll need to give more. Finally, you'll want to make sure that all of your examples and quotes are tied back to your thesis statement with clear connections. You'll want to make these connections with your audience in mind. Are they likely to agree with you, disagree, not really care that much? All of those things will impact how you write. Think about the explanation you give as connecting the dots on a map to help lead your reader to the right place in your paper. When you have a specific audience in mind, real or imagined, you can do a better job of guiding them. 